There's been a lot said over the past few days, so what I've taken for, for, to reduce the time, I've canalized a presentation I did earlier, um, prepared earlier this week, and I've incorporated a couple other things that I've heard this week. So you're going to see some people in here. You're going to see uh, a variety of things. If you're going to walk on thin ice, you may as, may as well dance. We're, <laughs> we're dancing to the stars. We need a space drive. So um, in order to keep it uh, humble, life of Brian Monty Python. He's making it up as he goes along. Next. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Dave, I can't do that. <laughs> Star fever. I must go up in the sky again from the lonely earthly sky, and all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. The boosters kick and straight sustaining and wind shear shaking and a light mist on the Earth's face and a blue moon waning. I think we forget when we're buried in tensors, building EM drives that we have no idea how it works, but it works at least a little bit. We forget the poetry. We should walk outside, take a look at the mountains around, smell the air. It might be good to get off the earth. It might be good to stay here, too. Next. Nimbo. Thank you. This is the cover. Well, it's part of the cover. Um, a planet of unknown. Well, there's at least, I think, I'm lost, uh, lost count at 2,700 planets that they've found so far. Um, they're looking for Goldilocks planets where they can, people can go to in their current present DNA state with no modification, and they're looking to modify the DNA as well. Spaceship through a wormhole to another world could be an individual as well. Next. Eventually, we just want to walk there. A stargate. Next. <laughs> Did you ever think, when you look at this, that it might be a Woodward, a mock Woodward drive <laughs> buried somewhere inside this thing? Maybe the whole thing? Is, well, anyways. Next. <laughs> Um, people are watching. I'm, this is an author. Um, I don't remember the exact publication, but it's a rather recent publication, as you know. Dreaming bold and beautiful dreams are essential to the mental well-being of individual and societies. And sometimes, just sometimes, hard and smart work make those dreams come true. This was at the end of an article about Estes Park, about this meeting. Um, at this point, I want to thank Gary Hudson for sponsoring the meeting. Thank you, Gary. Yeah. I don't know how to thank you, Jim. <laughs> Um, you've successfully inspired everybody in the room. It's been a long time. I mean, this has been a friendship of 10 years. Next, please. I look at it as asymmetries. Energy is, goes in all directions. Physicists love symmetries. They don't like asymmetries. Asymmetries means that things are not balanced. From this uh, perspective, 
Here we have the experiments. Here we have some theories. Mach effect thruster, number one. It's a mass differential, and that's used for thrust in a specific direction. All the energy that would be normally emitted in a, in a spherical manner is reduced to one particular direction. It's vectorized energy. Al Cubier came along. Well, oops. This, is a, this is the point where things became reality for people that at least there were equations for a space drive. But I looked at, I looked at this when I saw this originally, and then I found Jim's equation. And buried in those equations is the thrust of an impulse drive, the possibility of a warp drive, and perhaps even at higher energies, the possibility of a warp drive. That's a really interesting equation. EM drive comes along, we don't know how it works. We have people that are taking microwave ovens. In case I, I, I tease Paul March about this, is some guy, some farmer kid, is gonna go into the barn, take the copper bucket, put something over the top, take mom's microwave, she's gonna go to the microwave for dinner, and it's gone, and he's out there on a go-kart that he's modified with an EM drive. <laughs> <laughs> with all due respect, Paul, I wanna thank you for all the excellent publication of details. I think you've inspired a number of people, and I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of people on NSF, but a lot of people are watching as a result of your work. I'm a little tired, so I'm a little misty, you know. <laughs> Q thruster, Dr. White, Paul March. Who knows? Polarized vacuum differential. If you begin to look at these, you begin to see differential appearing throughout here. We're trying to get, press, get thrust in a specific direction. We're willing to consider McCulloch's theory. We're willing to consider tri-space transluminal theory. We can't really build anything yet to this level, but we're getting there. Variable speed of light, that's a little bit over the edge, but thank you anyways, Todd. Um, quantum gravity for engineers, I love the idea that we're beginning to finally link the physics of this stuff to the engineering, which leads me to you, Michelle, and your, uh, what, do you call, what do I call it? Uh, kitchen the kitchen sink, okay? You've taken a number of methods, like any good engineer would do, and say, well, just forget the theory, let's build something, I'll take this, 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 combine it into one thing, and if necessary, we'll throw in the kitchen sink. Um, I don't see him. Robertson. Oh, <laughs> there you are. Thin shell toolkit for all the space drives. Same thing applies, I think, with Jim. Um, Jim Jim's formula is sort of a mini toolkit for all the space drives. Next, please. Oh, well, back up. The beatings will continue until the theory is improved. It's called, formally it's called the peer review process. Next, please. <laughs> We're down here. Okay, so there's a long way to go. This is the simplified rocket development, engine development cycle. Uh, that's what NASA looks for, but we're at the base of the ladder. How do we climb that ladder? Well, first, we have to vet ideas and, and sort them out into reality and not so reality, okay? Next. This is the chart that I use. It's Millis's, uh, when he was doing the breakthrough propulsion program, this is the vetting chart. You start with all the categories of physics, and you walk way over here, pass through all of this, and all that you want is mass, speed, and energy, okay? You wanna know how big you can build it, how fast you can go, 
and how much is it going to cost me and can I stick it on the spaceship or do I have to you know, tap into the energy of a star? That's solar energy for, the, for some people. <laughs> so we start with the general physics and I'm going to point out a couple things up here. Transient mass, inertia, Woodward, and then somewhere in here is the EM drive and I can't see it right now. Some of these have fallen off. They've been vetted. They don't work for some reason. Curious effects, unknowns and issues. This is where a lot of the vetting gets done. And finally we end up going through a specific phenomena used to end up with variance and claims. And finally we get to the method. This is system readiness level. Before you even get to the TRL level, you have to do this analysis. So this is just the theory. Now some people ignore all this, luckily, and they build stuff in their garage, and they combine other methods, and they make something work. But then we have to, and I thank you, George, wherever you are, I thank you for highlighting how to vet actual experiments. That was a very good presentation you made. Next. I'll just let you read it. The, the stuff in red has been already vetted uh, or it's sort of an open claim. Uh, you'll see here Mock Woodward. You won't see EM drive on this. So this is an old slide, <laughs> relatively speaking. Uh, and it may contain a number of methods. Some of these may be combined when we finally explain some of this stuff next. I saw this, um, Paul Nation uh, is a physicist and he has, he actually goes through the math on each of these. I'm not going to explain the math. What's exciting about this is what we, when we're talking dynamic Casimir forces, and we're talking in, in Mach Woodward, we're talking parametric amplifiers. This is the beginning of the unification of methods into a true space drive. We're not going to get to space using any one of these methods. We're going to have to start combining and converging methods into a unified theory, even if we have to just add things on together. We, what we do want is we want to multiply. We want to multiply through amplification of the signal. We want to use magnetics to amplify it further, if we can. We want to tune it up. And then we want to scale multiply by using arrays. Next. We have to understand the relationships between all of these. Now, Hawking radiations, we don't have black, worm, um, black holes to work with unless we consider this to be uh, the electron. Unruh effect is um, uh, a squeeze effect. We know parametric amplification from optics. We know it works in, in signal analysis. This is a very important concept to do. And the jury's sort of still out on dynamic Casimir forces. Um, Mike McCulloch has a book out on combining dynamic Casimir and Unruh, but he doesn't use this in his explanation. Next. Well, this was a standard Casimir. It's two plates. It's not dynamic, it's just regular Casimir. Okay. I just read his book, so maybe I'm wrong. I think it's just two reflecting sheets. In any case, what we need is a framework, like, like what Mark did here. We need a framework going forward that takes all these, all these processes together. Next. Um, this is beyond, I'm going to skip this. This talks about warp drives and wormholes. Luckily, there's people like Eric Davis that are even out, out in front of the impulse drives thinking about further on, but notice that he's got a framework and he breaks things down. And most, some of us do that intuitively or we're so focused on something down here we forget the larger framework. So we do need a framework. Next. Homework assignment. 
you guys thought you were going to get away with three days and vacationing up there in the mountains and, and uh, all this nice oxygen we have. Here's your uh, homework assignment. Is Duroc Majorna whale fermion real? And here's the, here's the model. This looks like Mock Woodward again. Here are the formulas, the base formulas. But if you think about this, Dirac is mass charged. Last year they showed after uh, decades that a whale particle does exist. It, it's a no mass charge. It's equivalent to a charged photon. So I hear words about charged photons and other theoretical groups. So uh, you start looking at this, the big difference is this travels at the speed of light as opposed to electrons. Um, so the challenge, perhaps, yes, sir. <clears throat> if it's a charge and it's localized, it has to have a mass. E over C squared. Yes. Effectiveness. Mm -hmm. Effectiveness. That's, it's a real mass. If you slam it into something, it has. So, and, and muons, as part of the strong force, are lightning in their transmission and carry charge. So this is not a major new discovery. No. Okay. I'll accept that for now. Uh, there's something called the Woodward Rule. Um, if you come up with an idea and Jim says it's not going to work, uh, he's probably right. It'll take you a while to figure it out, but um, anyways. What we do here is we, we take the momentum change and I split it so you have, have this is massless, this is, this is mass. This is, this is supposed to be, anyways, this is, I need to change that. Massless, we basically use a charged photon model, and this. This may be wrong, but this is where you would start. And you would start testing that against and vetting that out. Uh, for references, people can look at, look at this paper. From, and uh, um, July, this, this article will lead you to uh, the scientific papers. Next. Michelle Boyles, where are you? Because I choose to dream. I believe we are at the cusp of our growth on this ball of mud. And if we don't evolve from this tiny seed called Earth, we may perish and never know the glorious heights that await us or the true challenges of a universe that has no bounds. Yes, I dream for humanity. Thank you, Michelle. Next. Any questions? <laughs>